Hello, everyone, and welcome to PeaceBuild's Climate Cinema. My name is Emily McLone, and I work as the director of PeaceBuild US. It is such a pleasure today to be here with Christophe Chagnard, who is a musical producer and one of the brains behind this amazing film, Terra Nostra. Christophe, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Emily. We're so excited to have you here and to think about climate action and using film as a tool for social change and raising awareness about the environmental challenges that we are seeing today, ever growing and changing as the climate changes on our earth. And I just wanna hear a little bit from your side, what was the beginning of this unique story uh, behind Terra Nostra? It's truly a unique story. You know, I have two great passions in life. It's, it's, it's art and especially music and also the environment. So I was ecstatic when in 2013, uh, a member of an orchestra I've been conducting, because I'm also a symphony conductor, uh, came to me and out of the blue asked me to uh, compose a piece about climate change. So it was an incredible opportunity to bring together those two passions, music and, and climate change, and, and the urgency that I feel to address what I find to be the, the most pressing issue that we're facing today. And so, um, I began uh, composing in uh, 2014, and uh, I spent about six months on the piece. In fact, I spent just about as much time planning the piece uh, as I did uh, writing it. Uh, I wrote it for a huge symphony orchestra because I feel very much that um, the sound of a full symphony orchestra has something that's very universal. In fact, when you think about it, uh, film scores nowadays are still using live orchestras. And it's a lot more expensive than using uh, artificial uh, sampling, but we still use big orchestras because this is the sound that emotionally resonates with people in a way that's very universal. So you yeah. show a film all around the world and you have that symphonic sound that goes with it. So it's not a coincidence that there's something about the symphony orchestra that's uh, uh, very much in our DNA, I would say. And so um, I, I planned the piece, and of course, how do you approach such a monumental subject? Uh, I had to really think very hard, and for me, the, the key aspect was uh, time and the perception of time, because of course, most of the impact that we've had on, on the planet, which um, led to climate changing, has happened in the last 50 years. So there is a tremendous acceleration of, of the impact uh, that we've had on our climate. And so I, I wanted the piece to be a, a big arch, if you will, starting from before the Big Bang, as I imagined it, because of course we don't have any data, to the Big Bang, all the way to present time. So uh, the piece is in one continuous movement. It, it's not uh, in segments, but it's one long narrative. And the narrative was very, very important to me. Uh, to uh, uh, show the earth in its initial pristine state and then the appearance of mankind. Um, then I, I quote composers as we go uh, until the industrial revolution. And then there is a distinctive uh, change of tone. And then we go through uh, specific aspects of, of climate change. So drought, uh, fires, you know, air pollution, um, melting uh, Arctic ice, uh, rising seas, etc. Um, yeah. And then, uh, uh, actually, there's something interesting about the ending. So I, I wrote the first version in, in 2014, and uh, ending the piece was very difficult because are you are you an optimist, a pessimist, a skeptic? You know, I had to find a way to end the piece. And at the time, um, Susan Lubetkin, who had commissioned the piece, felt like the ending was a bit too dark. <laughs> So um, we premiered the piece in, in 2015, it was very successful, but then uh, uh, we had an opportunity to uh, record it professionally. So I revised the piece and changed the ending to provide a bit more hope. Yes, that's so great. With Peace Boat as well, we're always looking to kind of leave on a message of hope at the end. I feel like we have so much to do and so little time. As you were saying before, you know, it's so urgent that we bring about this topic of climate action. So. It's good to end on a little bit of hope. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Otherwise, you know, I mean, I found that it's, it's hard enough for people to feel like they can make a difference on an individual level. But if, if you present them with a scenario that, that is essentially uh, doomed, 
then uh, you really uh, are closing the door to a uh, personal initiative. And uh, it's very important for, uh, for that piece, in my opinion, to, to convey a sense of uh, first awareness and to engagement that we all can do something on an individual and collective level. Uh, there is something else that, that uh, happened with uh, the whole version, which was not expected, but uh, ended up being a really good initiative, is um, I had commissioned a poem uh, because I wanted a, a, a teenager to have a voice in the piece. Uh, I feel like you know, people uh, under the age of 20 are gonna be deeply affected by climate change, far more than I can even fathom. Yes. And so um, I had a, a very good uh, friend in Boston. She was 17 at the time. Um, and a remarkable young woman, Emily Sif is her name. And I asked Emily to write a poem. And I didn't tell her how to write it and from what angle or what message to convey. I just said, it has to be about climate change, write anything you want. So I asked her to, to write a, a two minute poem and she wrote a six minute poem. That was very, very powerful. So she actually came from Boston and at the premiere, she read the poem with a piece so in, in three different segments. And it was very, very powerful, especially coming from someone of her age. And uh, another thing I did was I, we had an opportunity to premiere the piece in a big theater, a big screen, full-size movies. And I thought, wow, what a good opportunity to uh, have images. So uh, at the time, I put together myself. I'm not a movie maker by any stretch, but uh, I collected still images. And then I used the famous uh, Ken Burns uh, panoramic um, treatment of the image to give a sensation, a feeling of motion. And uh, I put about 150 images uh, throughout the piece. So someone was operating the visuals while I was conducting the piece. Wow. So it ended up being very much uh, uh, multi-dimensional uh, with poetry, visuals, and of course, music. So uh, fast forward to uh, 2019, uh, we decided that uh, the piece was good, but could be better. And so I spent about three months revising the piece. I changed a few uh, sections. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, I changed the ending uh, to give it more, uh, more hope. And uh, we, we hired a fantastic orchestra here in Seattle. It's an orchestra called uh, Seattle Music, and, and they are in the business of recording film scores. And uh, in January of 2019, uh, we recorded the new version, which was really a, a dream come true because the, the music now was expressed to the apex of its potential. The yeah, the imagery is, is really stunning. And the way that it flows with the music throughout the entire film um, is really impactful and, and definitely touches on your heartstrings, you know, to make you feel the music and the message. Yeah, this is what, what I like so much about the, the piece is that you can approach it from any angle. I mean, some people are completely taken by the visuals and, and, and have a more subconscious uh, perception of the music and others is exactly the opposite. They feel like, oh, no, I'd rather close my eyes and just let the music tell the story, which is all good. You know? So you, you can approach that piece from any angle. So once we had the, the new recording, which was absolutely state-of-the-art, multi-channel, uh, we thought, well, now we need, we need a really good film because you know, my, my piecemeal of images was no longer good enough. So we hired a company uh, here based in Seattle. And uh, essentially, we gave, them, we gave them the old version and then we, we told them, this is the guideline, this is the storyline, this is the, the framework, do what you want. And I, I try very much to not hover and, and uh, not be a control freak. And, uh, and they came up with something very, very personal. So what they did is that they essentially researched a collection of uh, HD footage and then put those together in, su in succession. So tremendous uh, editing uh, task. And uh, it worked. It really, it really worked. I felt like they really understood uh, my vision and, um, and served the music very well. So Charlie Spears, is really the one who, who worked on that project. And Charlie and I you know, got along creatively very well. And um, now as far as the poem, the idea with the poem is to record it with a celebrity. 
Uh-huh. So uh, I, I was hoping to get uh, Greta Thunberg to maybe uh, read the poem and record her do that. But of course, then COVID hit and things became a bit complicated. But I haven't given up on that idea. So uh, uh, we, we, we're we going to find a celebrity to, to read the poem and then we'll reinsert the poem into the piece. Oh, that's lovely. Well, I'm sure we'll have lots of people watching and learning about the film. So we'll be able to to find some influencers and celebrities who want to join us on board and, and work on this film with you together. So that brings me to a little bit about the, you know, the universality of this film. It's something you were talking about um, previously also, you know, how is this translatable into so many different cultures and languages? I think just because of the music, uh, everyone can really understand it, right? That's something we worked really hard on, is, is try to not, you know, be too, uh, you know, Western white uh, man, and, and try to be as open and, and broad as, as possible. Um, I remember when, when we showed the, the initial version, we, we showed it, we've shown the piece many, many times in, in public. And, and I remember uh, showing it to a group and then this lady raised her hand at the end at the Q&A and she said, you know, I live in East Africa and, and it'd be great to include the way we perceive climate change and the way it's impacting our community specifically, right? And I thought, well, absolutely. This, so the, the, the grand vision would be to, to actually um, have the music as a soundtrack and for people to be able to add their own footage and in, in effect create the, their own custom version of Terra Nostra. So, so in, in, in that respect, it's completely expandable. Well, that sounds beautiful. And that's something that's really participatory as well, people to to join in with the music and to create their own films based on their realities. And that can be timeless as well, you know, something that represents the constant change that we're all going through um, with the planet. That sounds great. And um, that also brings me to um, another topic about how we talk about climate change, right? You know, people telling their own stories or, you know, whether it's, um, you know, working with partners in climate action uh, from United Nations delegates to civil society, youth, everybody has a different story about climate change, right? And how it's impacting our lives. And uh, you were saying, you know, that we have a PR problem with climate change and how we talk about it. Tell us a little bit about how you think, you know, this film is helping with that. Yeah, I think we do. Uh, Although the the scientific data is becoming overwhelming, you know, for the longest time, people were questioning the numbers, but now it's unquestionable. Scientific data is there and still, and still there is still skepticism in two ways. One, is it really happening? Is it really man-made? And two, even if it is, what can we as individuals do? How can we make a difference? And, and, and there is a lot of feeling of, you know, what, what could it matter whether I do this, this or that, you know, uh, recycle, drive an electric car, uh, become vegetarian, uh, the list is long. Um, and, and yet I, I firmly believe that, that we can we collectively uh, can and, and some things are happening now actually because I mean look what's happening you know, with fires right now the worst fires in history in California right I live here in Seattle and for three days we had the worst air on earth on earth the worst air on earth no, if, yeah. if that's not if, we, if it's not that's not compelling what is exactly and it's not going so, to change until you know we change the system right until we change our actions I feel like you know, these unprecedented fires, like you mentioned, um, and so many tornadoes and hurricanes and many other, you know, challenging issues that are coming up, natural disasters are going to continue until we really make a major change for our environment. Massive changes start with individual initiative, right? Mm-hmm. That, that multiply, and we the people have, have the power to change policies, we absolutely do, but we have to absolutely. have complete confidence that, that this is essential. And this is not for us, I mean, this is for the next generation. I have, I have children, you know, six to uh, 19, and it's, it's really for them. Like, I, I want to, to leave this earth, looking at them in the eyes and say, you know what, I did absolutely everything I could to, to leave the, the earth in the best possible condition as possible. Certainly, certainly not as, as pristine as I found it when I was born. Sure. Um, but you know what's interesting about Terra Nostra is that we, we've shown it in, in uh, middle school, in high school, We've shown it in big outdoor events for families and so a very broad spectrum of, of an audience. And, and I've seen the reaction, for instance, from children. 
children were just completely mesmerized by this. And, and, and then we did a Q&A at the end and they would say, you know, I had no idea this was happening. This is not something that we ever talk uh, about with my parents. And I'm going to go home and, and address that with them, for instance. Right. Uh, we did um, uh, uh, surveys uh, after some of the presentations. And, and again, it was very interesting that the, uh, some people had a, a, a emotional reaction that, that triggered um, the beginning of a conversation, which is how it, big, it can start, right? You have that, that little spark of interest that can then lead to a change in behavior. And uh, I've, shown, I've shown that film to skeptics. I've shown the film to deniers, staunch deniers. And, and may, I'm not saying that you know, I converted them in 30 minutes, but, but what I did is that I, I allowed them to engage into a debate, at yeah. least to, 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 open, to open their mind enough that they were not willing to it, when before it was like, oh, forget it, you're wasting my time. Yeah, the film really strikes an emotional chord, right? It really gets to the, the core, you know, of the feelings around the issue. I think it, it definitely motivates people to want to make a difference. This is what music can do. This is what art can do. I mean, art is so powerful. And this is why, you know, I also created uh, um, Earth Creative. It's another company I created, non-profit. And uh, the subtext is uh, artists of the world unite for the planet. Well, that's great. Art Artists unite for the planet. Uh, I, I really wish that artists collectively did a lot more. Uh, we, we used to have those mega concerts for uh, starvation you know, uh, in, in Africa, for instance, mm -hmm. as you recall. Uh, and I think especially now that we're all stuck at home because of, of COVID, that artists have an opportunity to create uh, and, and rise collectively uh, because if, if this is not the cause that you're going to dedicate yourself to and, and, and your skill and, and your, your artistry, then what is? What Absolutely. is? But I, I, you know, I, had, I remember some years ago, um, I've been composing a lot of music, but I, I, came, um, I came at a juncture where I decided that I would no longer uh, write music for entertainment. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of that. Plenty of that, there's lo and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, music has to be relaxing and entertaining and groovy and cool. And, uh, but I felt that uh, after everything that I had learned about the human condition, that everything I would write from about 10 years ago to, to today would be engaged in, in one way or another. And so this is the way I contribute. You know, we all have our skills and, and uh, abilities, and mine is in music. No, oh, it's really beautiful. And, you know, with Peace Boat also, we have uh, so many prog like projects and, um, and programs on board the ship with young people learning music uh, from the Venezuela Youth um, Symphony to, you know, musicians who come on board and teach music as a tool for social change. And um, it's just such an important tool, you know, that music can really reach everyone. And it's such a great message that you bring that if you're going to be an artist and if you're going to be a musician, why not use it for a positive, you know, social issue or a change that you want to see in the world? So I think it's inspiring to have, you know, music producers and composers like yourself to be able to kind of, you know, set the standard and to encourage other artists to also get involved. So if you have one maybe closing message uh, for any artists or composers or film producers who are out there and, and watching your film, what is one message around the film that you'd like to share? Well, the message is that, um... We can all make a difference, but if we are blessed with the gift of creativity, uh, it is our responsibility to use it in a way that is engaged and, and to do so uh, in the service of, of awareness about our planet is essential, is absolutely essential. And, and especially now, I mean, uh, uh, no. COVID is very much related to everything. You know, uh, it's like the, the huge sounding alarm about a species. Like, can't you see? It is time to really do something. And I think artists need to, to, to be engaged. So anyone having, having talent can make a difference. The feeling that it doesn't matter is not true. It, it absolutely does matter and, and it, it can work. I've seen it, I've seen it through that piece and others that um, 
people's heart uh, is mostly open and and music as a way to to unleash uh, emotions that are very powerful i wouldn't i would not underestimate that i mean music has been around forever you know for a reason some music is timeless and still strikes a deep chord listen to beethoven symphony number no. 9 and his his great message of uh, humanhood and it still as relevant today as ever yes so, yeah. and, you no, know, when I chose, I chose the the title of the piece. It's always difficult to choose a title, but Terra Nostra, which in Latin means our Earth, and and I, I did it with with irony because, of course, uh, yes, it's our Earth, but it's not ours at all. Uh, we're we're tenants at best. Yes. <laughs> we, are, we are we are guests, and and we're not very good tenants at the moment, but yet this is our home. This is the only home we have. There is no you know there's no Plan B. There's no Planet B. You know. We talk about Mars, but Mars will be for the few. So uh, this is it. This is a home, and we really, really have to to take care of it. So I would say, you know, artists of the world, unite. Yes, thank you so much, Christoph. It's such an inspiration to be able to speak with you. I'm really excited that we're sharing your film, and I just encourage everyone to to watch it um, online. And when it's available in the future, we'll be sharing it even more widely. I think in January, you said uh, this year or next year, you're gonna be sharing it online? This year, absolutely. So as of, as of uh, January of 2021, as a, a way to, to launch, uh, hopefully, a lot more positive uh, year, uh, Terra Nostra will be available to anyone on YouTube made public, uh, because we're still applying for uh, film festivals at the moment. We've had great luck with that. Uh, but as of January 1st, that would be a nice way to launch into uh, what hopefully will be a, a redeeming year. Yes, I think so. It's, it's what we have to work towards, right? Um, the future is bright and we have to work together for climate action. So thank you so much, Christophe. Thank you for, for joining us and thank you to everyone who's tuning in. And we hope that you will see us again soon here online and thank together you. with Terra Nostra. Thank you, Christophe.